Hello everyone, Alex with Beam It Up here. Today we're going to focus on rooms. I'm going to show you all about rooms in Revit. And I'm very aware that most of us are MEP guys, but we need to really understand how rooms behave. So in this video I'm going to show you how to create rooms in Revit. I'm going to show you how to modify the room name and room number. I'm going to show you how to select a room, which can be tricky sometimes. I'm going to show you how to create a room schedule in Revit. I'm going to show you how to modify the room parameters, whether it's from the room, from the tags, or from the schedules. I'm going to show you how to activate the room volume computations, which can be tricky sometimes. I'm going to show you how to delete rooms. We're going to deal with the room tags, the room itself, the schedule, and the difference between them. I'm going to show you how to place rooms from a schedule, directly from a schedule. I'm going to show you how to merge rooms, which is how to make elements, not room bounding. And finally, I'm going to show you how to separate or split rooms. So, see you in Revit. And before we even start, think about it. It makes sense. If you like this kind of content, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. You hit that bell so you get notifications. You don't miss any of our videos. And if you have any questions about this topic or any other topic, make sure to leave me a comment and I'll try to get to you as soon as I can. Okay, so we're here with our practice model and what we want to end up with is something like this, right? So we want to create a couple of rooms, maybe a couple of stairs here and a couple of restrooms and a few labs. So let's go ahead and do that. And for that, I'm gonna come here under architecture, under the room and area panel of the ribbon. You click here on room. And if you keep this tag on placement option on, then as soon as you hover over the room, it will create the room. Notice that it's identifying the room bounding elements. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, for now, let's just place this room here and I'm going to give this room a name and it's going to be stair. It's going to be a stair and the room number is going to be 101, right? And now here I want to have a few labs. So let's go ahead and do that. And, and by the way, you can, you can create rooms all at once and tag them all at once, but I'm just doing them one, one by one so we can see exactly what we're doing. So let's click here on room and let's do a couple of um, labs here. And I wanna show you that if you type, let's say lab, right? And this is lab 102. Now, if I wanna select my room, sometimes it's not that easy and it can be quite frustrating at the beginning, but you can always tap select until this displays and then there you are selecting the room right so you can do um, create similar and let's uh, create a couple more rooms and the best way to keep track of what's going on with your rooms is uh, to create a room schedule so let's go ahead and create a quick room schedule here. For that, you come down here to schedules, right click, new schedule and quantities. And now you make sure that you're including architecture here. And then we can type R for room. And then we are scheduling building components, okay? We're not gonna do a key schedule today. We're gonna deal with scheduling building components and that building component in this particular instance is going to be the rooms contained in our model okay so that name that we have by default room schedule is okay it's fine by me so let's click okay and this is very important the face under which these rooms are being created is new face we'll look at that in a little bit so but the important thing here is that i want my face to be new construction so that 
the face is able to identify all those rooms and display them in the schedule. Okay, so let's go ahead and click OK. And now we need to add a few fields to our schedule. So let's say room name definitely has to be there. Room number. Uh, we can add maybe the, actually I want to have the room number. I'm going to have it first. Then I have the room name, then maybe the ceiling height, and then let's say the area and volume, and uh, probably some comments at the end. All right, and I'm going to take this up a little bit right after number, and it's got to click OK. And we have our room schedule created just like that. So let me go ahead and tile my window. The only way that this works is if you click on the view first and then you do WT and then you tile both. So a couple of things here. Uh, when you select, let's say I select this element here. What I'm selecting is a tag. You see room tag. I'm not selecting the actual room. If I want to select the room, you're going to see a, an, some kind of an X, some diagonal lines crossing. And that's what's going to tell you that you're selecting your room. And sometimes it's a little bit hard. So what you can do is go to any room bounding element like a wall and then tap select until this displays. Then when I click here, then I am selecting now the actual room. Okay. And I can see the properties of that room right here. You see the area, the perimeter. If we're computing volumes, you would see the volume here. We're going to change that in a little bit. I'm going to show you how to do that. And see, you, I have a room number right here, 102, which is this one being displayed. And a room name, it's a lab. And that's what's being displayed on the top. And that's the same element that I'm reading here lab for name and 102 for number right so you can input information in Revit in different ways for example i want this 102 to be 202 i can type it here 202 and then it would change in the label and it would also change right here in my schedule right the same way you can type the input in your schedule and then it would change not only in your schedule and your label, but also your room. Like if you go and, and you were to select your room, now in your properties you have 102, right? So in this case, I'm gonna change all these to labs. It's gonna be labs 102, 103, 104, and 105, and 106. Okay. Now another thing I want to show you is, do you remember how we were not displaying our our volume is not being computed? Uh, that can be a little bit frustrating at the beginning too. You know the the room does know a lot of information about itself. It has the area and it has the unbounded height. So why not calculate the volume? It's right here. Well, the reason is because. Uh, typically by default if you come here to architecture and the room and area panel and then you click here on this drop down and you go to area and volume computations this is a little bit faster you know the performance is better if you're just calculating areas but if you want to calculate areas and volumes then you can click here and then you're calculating areas and volumes and then this little section here tells you from where you're reading those areas so it can be either from the wall finish or it can be the wall center line etc in this case i'm going to keep it at wall finish and what that means is that the area computation starts here and not like in the middle right so now that we activated that that option we can read our volume computations here okay and right now we have no ceilings here. This is just a slab to slab uh, group of rooms that we have. Um, another thing I wanna show you is how to delete a room. Uh, this can be quite frustrating at the beginning as well. 
uh, because you know it would be normal like if you select let's say this element here what you're selecting is the room tag right so let me just delete the room tag and let's see what happens you delete that you get this warning saying that a room tag was deleted but the corresponding room still exists you can place another tag for the room using the room tag tool or select the room and delete it so let's uh okay let's okay out of that and that was a uh, lab 106 right you can see that lab 106 still exists as a room and if i'm selecting it from here it's highlighting in the model that's the room right here so the room still exists what i removed was the tag so if i were to click here and say tag room and i come here it knows that it's lab 106 see so there it is lab 106 so i'm gonna um, remove that tag and in this case i want to remove the room itself right so i can either uh, if I try to select, if I try to select it from here with tab select, and I click on the room, I'm I'm now actually selecting the real, the actual room. And if I click delete, it's telling me that a room was deleted from all model views, but still remains in the project. And this is quite counterintuitive. It tells you the room can be removed from any schedule or placed back in the model using the room command. So the, the reason why Revit is doing this is because they want to keep the, the option for architects that have a, a bunch of rooms already in the schedule and they simply want to place them in the model and say, okay, I need three more labs, lab 106, 107, and 108. Then one of them's going to be here, the other one's going to be here, the other one's going to be here, for example. So if you were to say, okay, I'm going to create a room you can either create a new room which is the the option that is set up by default or you can select a room from a list of rooms that have not been placed in the model see so in this case room 106 lab 106 is available for placement so i'm going to click here and i'm going to place it here and that way you know i would have my room uh, created here and it's called lab 106 now, if you want to remove the room for good, the best way is to come here to the schedule. Let's say Lab 106. You right click, you go Delete Row, and that will get rid not only of the room, it also gets rid of the room tag. You know, that's the cleanest way to remove a room from a project, is from the schedule. That's actually the formal way of removing a room from your project. Another thing that can be quite frustrating at the beginning is, uh, let's say right here we have two toilets, right? We have a, re a male restroom and a female restroom. If I were to click here on room and I click inside of here, notice that, you know, my room is being defined by this wall. And that's quite annoying because I want the, let's say this is the male restroom, right? So I call this male. Uh, I want the whole thing to be the male restroom, not only this part. I don't want to separate the stall from my room. So, but then if I click here, I, I do tab select, I can see that my bounding elements are, are, are defining it just like this one. So if I were to do room, now this is being, you know, interpreted as a separate room. We don't want to do that and what's happening is that this wall right here if i click on it you can see that there's a room bounding property here and by default is on so if i were to turn it off now this doesn't serve as a boundary for a room so if i go back to selecting my room now my room is the way i want it right so again, if I do the same thing for the female, see, now it's not working. And it's not working because this guy here has its room bounding properties checked. I want to uncheck first, and now I can place my room right here. You see, so it's working. And one last thing I want to show you is, let's say this grand ballroom here, right? If I uh, tap select here, 
is room, this whole thing is a room, a single room, right? Let's say you wanted to split this room in half, right? Like a ballroom A and ballroom B, for example. You can always come here and use the room separator and basically just sketch out. It doesn't have to be a straight line. It can be a curve. It can be, a, you know, different segments like a polyline. In this case, I'm going to just do a, a straight line. Let's say from, from here to here. Right. And now if you do your tab select, now this room has been separated and it kept the tag on the room that was closest, right? So now I can simply come here, click on room, and now I have another room right here. So I can call this ground ball room A and I can call this ground ball room B. So that's one last thing I wanted to show you. Let me take this tag inside and um, that's it. And although we MEP engineers typically don't create rooms, the, ar the architect creates rooms. We create MEP spaces. If you want to learn how to create MEP spaces, go ahead and check out another video of mine that is how to create MEP spaces hey, but it's always a good idea to understand what the architect is doing and how they're creating their rooms so I hope you found this useful and uh, I'll see you soon and if you have enjoyed this video make sure you like it down there subscribe to the channel hit that bell so you get notified thank you for watching and see you on the next video